Hello to everyone. Welcome to the course on numerical linear algebra and application. Today we are going to have 25th lecture. Before going to the 25th lecture, let us quickly recall what we did in the previous lecture. We were trying to solve the factorization, how Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting and Gaussian elimination without partial pivoting would help us in order to get the best accurate solution. Also in the process, we have seen how the eigenvalue competition could be done by using different techniques. Today, we are going to do some more concepts in related to the eigenvalue competition. Let us see the eigenvalue competitions using the characteristic polynomial. One would ask why should eigenvalues not be computed via the characteristic polynomial? It is a very natural question since the eigenvalues of a matrix are the zeros of the characteristic polynomial. So essentially if you have a polynomial P of n will be equivalent to 0. So these the values of n such that P n will be close to 0 should need to be satisfied. So it is natural to think of computing the eigenvalues of matrix A by finding the zeros of its characteristic polynomial. Zeros of its characteristic polynomial. However, this approach is not numerically effective. Why it is not numerically effective? We would see difficulties with eigenvalue competitions using the characteristic polynomial. The first thing is the process of explicitly computing the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial may be numerically unstable. Second one is the zeros of the characteristic polynomial may be very sensitive to perturbation of the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial. Thus, if the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial are not computed accurately, there will be errors in the computed eigenvalues. So because of these two reasons, we were motivated to do the computation of the characteristic polynomial. So computing the characteristic polynomial of a matrix explicitly amounts to transforming the matrix to a block companion to a black companion or Frobenius form. Every matrix A can be reduced by similarity to C and this matrix C is nothing but diagonal of C1, C2, Ck. So it becomes Frobenius form and if k is equal to 1, the matrix is called non-derogatory. So, when the matrix is Frobenius and when the matrix is non-derogatory, what are the consequences and how it actually affects the approximating the solution of a system of equations. So, in fact, the system of equations in a sense, we were trying to solve ax is equal to b. This is the process. Now, assuming that a is non-derogatory and let us see how a can be reduced to a companion matrix by similarity transformation. Right? This can be achieved in two stages. This can be achieved in two stages. That is, the first stage is the reduction of a matrix to a companion matrix. First stage is the matrix A is transformed to an upper Heisenberg matrix that is H. 
upon Hydrogen matrix H by orthogonal similarity using the householder or Givens method. Householder or Givens method. Second stage is the transformed unreduced Heisenberg matrix H is further reduced to a companion matrix called C by similarity assuming that H is unreduced matrix. So what we were trying to do is we were trying to reduce the coefficient matrix into a Heisenberg form in two stages. The first stage is upper Heisenberg matrix and second stage is unreduced Heisenberg matrix and H is further reduced to a companion matrix. We have already seen that stage 1 can be performed in a numerically stable way. That means the stage 1 is quite it is stable and it is desirable. Consider now the stage 2 that is the transformation of the unreduced Heisenberg matrix H that is the transformation of the unreduced Heisenberg matrix H to a companion matrix C. So C is the companion matrix. So with this notation we can write let X be the non-singular transforming matrix such that H of X is equal to X into C h of x is equal to x into c where c is the matrix of 0, 0, everything is 0, c1, 1, 0, 0, 0, everything is 0, c2 and 0, 1, everything is 0, c3. Lastly, we have 0, 0, 1, cn. This is what is called companion matrix. So, if x1, x2, xn are the n successive columns of x, then from hx is equal to x into c, it is easy to see that knowing x1, one can compute x2, x3, xn recursively. We can compute x2, x3, x4, xn recursively and we will write it as h of x i will be equal to x of i plus 1. x of i is equal to x of i plus 1 and for i is equal to 1, 2, n minus 1. So, furthermore, if x of 1 is equal to let us say 1 0 0 0 transpose then it is easy to see that matrix x is a lower triangular matrix with 1 h2 1 etc h3 2 h n n as the diagonal entries thus if x is non-singular since h of i plus 1 i not equal to 0 for i is equal to 1 2 etc n minus 1. However, if one or more of these sub diagonal entries is small then clearly X is a ill-conditioned matrix. Thus, the first stage in which A is transformed to a Heisenberg matrix H using the householder or the Givens method is unstable. Thus, the first stage in which A is transformed to a Heisenberg matrix A using the householder matrix H or the Givens method would become a stable numerically. While when you look at into the second stage, the one which we did it in the previous, the matrix H is further reduced to a 
companion matrix and it becomes highly unstable which is not a desirable situation. So, as we spoke, let us see the stages 1 and 2 which we did it through an example. Let us say that I have a matrix, 3 rows, 3 columns, 1, 2, 3, point zero zero one 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 zero two three. this is the matrix H and X1 is 100 zero zero transpose and X2 is H times of X1. So, this will become like this and X3 will be like this. Now, capital X is equal to this matrix 11 1 1.0002 0 0.0001, 0 0.002, 0 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.02. And if you take x inverse of hx, you get a matrix called C and this is the form of C. So, there is a 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 4 non-zero elements and 4 zero elements. So, the condition number when you compute, it becomes very bigger value. So, obviously, the system will become a unstable ill condition. Note that the existence of a small subdiagonal entry of H, right, namely H21, made the transformation matrix will become a highly ill conditioned system, which is not desirable. Sensitivity of the individual eigenvalues. The condition number X times of X inverse gives an overall assessment of the changes in the eigenvalues with respect to changes in the coefficients of the matrix. However, as we have seen from the example, some eigenvalues of A may be more sensitive than others. So, in fact, some may be very well conditioned while the others are ill conditioned. Similarly, some eigenvectors may be well conditioned while others are not well conditioned. So, therefore, the point is the system becomes well conditioned, ill conditioned is very, very important. It is therefore more appropriate to talk about conditioning of the individual eigenvalues rather than conditioning of the eigenvalue problem. Recall that an analysis of the ill conditioned individual eigenvalues or the slightly perturbed Wilkinson matrix was given in terms of the condition numbers of the individual eigenvalues of the matrix. In general, this can be done for any diagonalizable matrix. So, let x inverse a x is we can write this as a diagonal. So, you have a lambda 1, lambda 2 like this, lambda n, these are all zeros. Then the normalized right and left eigenvectors corresponding to an eigenvalue lambda i are given by xi is equal to capital xi upon norm of xi of 2 and yi is equal to x inverse of transpose ei upon norm of x inverse of transpose ei2. So, therefore, if you consider this A is equal to the matrix 1, 2, 3, 0 0.9991, 0, 0, 2. So, if you apply this algorithm, 1 over S1 turns out to be like this, 1 over S2 turns out to be like this, 1 over S3 turns out to be like this. So, condition number is 6.8708 into 10 power 3, very bigger number. And if you write 1 over S, it will be less than condition number 2 for any value of i is equal to 1, 2, 3. Because the matrix is order of 3, so therefore obviously the, the subscript i runs from 1 to 3. Well, what is the remark we can note down or here is, note that the condition number of the eigenvalues 1 and point zero zero 0.009 are large. That is why they are sensitive to small perturbations. The condition numbers 
and linear dependency of vectors we can define as since for a diagonalizable matrix the columns of the matrix x are the eigen vectors of a matrix a so condition number x gives us an indication of how linearly independent the eigen vectors are so if condition number is large it means that the eigen vectors are nearly dependent so it is natural to see the how the eigen values sensitivity could be talked in terms of normal matrix so it is very easy to see a matrix a is called normal matrix if a times of a trans a star will be equal to a star times of a what is a star a star is nothing but a bar transpose a hermitian matrix is normal normal matrices are not diagonalizable because they do follow the property of diagonalizable a remarkable property of a normal matrix a is that if x is transforming matrix the transforms a to a diagonal matrix then the condition number will become 1 so once the condition number becomes 1 then it becomes close to a stable matrix because one we consider it as a small as compared to 10 power 4 or 10 power 5 and so on so forth we can see this example over here 3 by 3 matrix you see here 1 2 3 4 5 6 so zero entries are 6 non zero entries are 1 2 3 only so it's a very much highly sparse now let us calculate a prime so a prime i call it as a plus delta a so a plus delta a are 1.992 so no change in a as a is symmetric eigen values are well conditioned however the eigen vectors of a cap r a prime r so this is the vector and this is the vector this is the vector so you get three different eigen values so you will have a three different eigen vectors now while those of matrix a you see 100010001 note that the eigen vector corresponding to lambda 2 is equal to 3 has not changed while that of other two vectors have changed this is due to the proximity of associated with the eigen values of the matrix 1.99 well so when you talk about the the real square form and qr alteration how it help us in order to determine the ill conditionedness in the preceding discussion we have seen that computing eigen values of a matrix a using the reduction of a to the companion matrix or the jordan canonical form is not numerically a effective procedure as we spoke if the transforming matrix is ill conditioned matrix ill conditioned matrix then there may be large errors in the computed canonical form and this in turn will introduce large errors in the eigen values therefore the lesson is that we should avoid non orthogonal transformation in eigen value or eigen vector computations and use only orthogonal or unitary transformations which are perfectly conditioned indeed if a matrix a is transformed to a matrix b using unitary similarity transformation then the perturbation in a will result in perturbation b so of the same magnitude so we will write it as b will be equivalent to u star times of a of u and u star times of a plus delta of a will of times of u is equal to b plus delta of b and we can have that is norm of delta b to norm is nothing but delta of a into to norm so we can see from this example let us look at into 3 by 3 matrix so when you do the eisenberg and all those stuff ultimately you will end up with a matrix called this matrix u and what is the form of b b is nothing but u star of a of u so this should become like this where delta a is 10 power minus 5 into 1000 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 
So then A1 is equal to A plus delta A. So therefore it will become like this, this matrix. So these are changes. And B1 is equal to U star A plus delta A times of U. So this will become a matrix like this. So what is the conclusion? Delta of B is nothing but that is B1 minus B which is equal to 10 power minus 5 times of A of 3 comma 3. So where delta of A1 is equal to 10 power minus 5 and delta B is equal to 10 power minus 5. So having had this discussion, let us see the, the triangulation theorem of the which was discovered by square. So this is what is called square triangulation theorem. If the matrix A is n by n matrix, then there is a unitary matrix U such that we can write it as U star of times of A of U is equal to T where T is a triangular matrix with diagonal values lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n as the entries. So we will prove the theorem using induction on n. So this proof is by induction. If n is equal to 1, the theorem is trivially true because nothing can be done. So it is as usual. Next assume the theorem is true for n is equal to k minus 1 and then we will show that it is also true for n is equal to k. This is what is called mathematical induction. So in order to prove this theorem, let u be a normalized vector a associated with an eigenvalue lambda 1. Now define the matrix u1 is equal to u1 is equal to that is u1 times of v where v is of k by k minus 1 and is unitary matrix. Then u1 is unitary matrix and a1 is equal to u1 star times of a u1 and diagonal is of lambda 1 a where lambda is k minus 1 by k minus 1 matrix. By our hypothesis there exists a unitary matrix v1 of order k minus 1 such that that is t of cap is equal to v1 star times of a cap of v1 triangular then defining the matrix called u2 diagonal of 1 etc that is v2. So therefore, we could be able to arrive into this. So since the eigenvalues of matrix triangle appear in the main diagonal, so therefore we could be able to prove this theorem. So we will see now real square form triangulation, how it is different from the square triangulation. So again we start with the matrix A, real matrix, square matrix with real matrix. Then there is a matrix n by n orthogonal matrix Q such that Q transpose AQ is equal to R, the form of A will be like this. So these are all main diagonal, these are all zeros, these are all non-zeros. Where each RI I is either a scalar or 2 by 2 matrix. The scalar diagonal entries corresponds to a real eigenvalues and 2 by 2 entries corresponding to the corresponding eigenvalue conjugate eigenvalues. So the basic QR iteration is, the idea behind the QR iteration method is, iteratively construct a sequence of matrices A of K starting from A naught is equal to A such that each A i plus 1 is orthogonally similar to A with an expectation that the sequence will converge to a real square matrix if from which the eigenvalues of A can be easily extracted. And for each matrix in the sequence is constructed by taking what you call a QR factorization of the previous matrix. And then multiply the matrices Q and R in reverse order, specifically the basic QR method is as follows. It can be demonstrated as follows. Look at this. So input is you are given a square matrix of n by n. Output you do expect is sequence of matrices A k containing the eigenvalues of the matrix A. So it should have a lambda 1, lambda 2, etc. all those things and should contain all the eigenvalues of lambda A. So what is the step 1 we do? A naught is equal to A1. So in the beginning A itself we treat it as A naught and step 2 compute A now a sequence of matrices A I K define as follows. For K is equal to 1 to N2 find the factorization of A K minus I K minus 2. So QR factorization compute AR is equal to RK minus 1 Q K minus 1. So reverse the multiplication of the order. So this is fine. Now what about the condition, convergence? A condition for convergence is how it can be interpreted is let the eigenvalues 
the lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n be such that so they are all mod of lambda 1 greater than or equal greater strictly greater than mod of lambda 2 greater than mod of lambda n like this. And let the eigenvector of the matrix x of the eigenvector that is the right side vector x inverse be such that its leading principal minors are non-zero. So therefore, we could able to find out the inverse then a k converges to an upper triangle matrix to real square form as defined in the previous statement. So in fact, it can be shown that the above conditions the first column of a k approaches a multiple of e v thus for sufficiently large we get a k is equal to this will get as lambda 1 a k so this is 0. So we can catch hold of the local and then try to find out the values. We can apply the QR iteration again to a k bar and the process can be continued to show that <coughs> the sequence converges to a upper triangular matrix. So we can demonstrate by using this example. You have a 2 by 2 matrix. The eigenvalues of a are 5.373 and this is the one and lambda 1 greater than lambda 2 for k is equal to 0 this is the thing and ultimately you get a matrix Q and the matrix R. R is in the same form as we spoke over in the previous statement. So for k is equal to 1, so you can write AR1 that is R0, Q0. So this is how you do get which is same as Q1, R1. Q1 is nothing but this, Q2, R1 is nothing but like this. For k is equal to A2 is R2, Q1. So this is what you do get it. Note that we have already made some progress towards obtaining the eigenvalues. So therefore, we do not want to do much and we could able to find out these values of R and Q. So R is in this form, 1, 1 Megan values, this is the 1 and for R2 is main diagonal, this is 0, this is the non-zero entry. So for K is equal to 3, so you will have A3 that is R2, Q2, you get the matrix like this and Q4 matrix will be like this, R3 will be like this. So ultimately for K is equal to 4, you can write the form that is R1, R2, R1, R2, that is uh, row 1 and is row 2, therefore this is called row 1 m2 multipliers row 1 row 1 1 by 1 1 by 2 2 by 1 2 by 2 elements so that's how you do compute the real form of the matrices so today lecture what we have seen was how the matrix a can be computed by using the heisenberg transformation what is the forms of uh, real square matrices how it can affect the numerical solution through these examples so thank you very much for listening to my class thank you once again